Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is grilled dry aged ribeye with butter poached lobster. Well today we're cooking up some Valentine's Day surf and turf and we're going big time. Like I've got a Creekstone Farms prime rib roast that's been hanging out in the steak locker dry aging since December. It's actually been pulled just shy of 70 days so it's gonna have big beefy, funky flavor. And then for the surf portion of our surf and turf, we're doing some butter poached lobster tails cooked in a white wine and butter emulsion. So this is our section of the prime rib, the Creekstone prime, prime rib that's been dry aging. You can see just how gnarly that is on the outside. It's formed this pellicle, this whole crust on the outside. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna slice off the end, slice this into steaks, and then we can trim that pellicle from the edges. Boy, look at that marbling. Wow. You can see how that color, that's even a little close to the edge, how dark that is, how that lightens up a bit. That's just dense. I mean, it's just really concentrated all that beefy flavor in there. So now that we've got those sliced into steaks, we just need to take off that very outer part. We're gonna work our way around the perimeter here. And all of this stuff that we're trimming off, while you could just throw it away, there are uses for it. You can actually use these to make a dry aged beef stock, uh, which we've done in one of our previous videos. I believe you'll find that in our video for dry aged prime rib with beef gravy. Another thing we can do that we're gonna mess around with in the future is actually working it into a grind for a dry aged burger. I'm just making sure I've shaved off all of those hard bits from the outside. And then we have pretty beautiful dry aged ribeye. Looks a lot smaller, but that's just what happens in that dry ager when everything really concentrates. There's a lot of flavor in there. Now we're gonna season these up with some California tri-tip seasoning today. Just very simple, basic, savory flavors. But this is a pretty coarse rub, and I don't want anything to scorch the surface, so I'm gonna break it down really fine, just in our spice grinder. Tell you what, let me hit this with a little oil first. Just a little bit of oil for binder. But we're gonna put this seasoning on here pretty fine so it just sticks right to the surface. Honestly, the beefiness of this, you could just go salt and pepper. We're not adding much more with some garlic, onion, bell pepper flavors. But we want that to just kind of melt into that meat rather than burning on the surface when we grill this. Cut these pretty thick. So I'm gonna go ahead and season the sides up as well. And then we'll just kind of set this aside to rest while we do a little work for our butter base for the lobster. So the butter for our butter poached lobster, we want to get this broken down into tablespoons because we're gonna slowly mount this into our sauce or our emulsion. I'm using a cultured butter today just for that extra rich flavor. Now for our aromatics, we've got some garlic that we're just gonna slice thin. And then we've got some shallots. We're looking for about a third of a cup of shallots once they're finely minced down. Now we've got a couple of fairly small lobster tails, which is fine because we've got a big old piece of steak to go along with it. We're just gonna cut along top of that tail. We want to free the flesh from the shells because we're just going to be poaching the actual flesh of the tail. So I'm going to put this on its side and kind of crush it to open up. And then you can get your fingers underneath and free it from the shell. 
and then it pops right out. So at this point, we're ready to start cooking. We're gonna get the steaks on the grill first, and then as they're cooking, we're gonna do the butter poached lobster. Now, speaking of the grill, today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. It's running at 450 degrees with hickory pellets, and we're set up for direct grilling with grill grate panels right over the flame. We're gonna go right over the flame with our steaks and close up the lid so we can start to heat these all the way through. The first thing we gotta do is build this white wine butter emulsion before we can actually poach the lobster. So we're gonna come in with a little extra virgin olive oil. We've got our shallots and our garlic. We throw in a tablespoon of that same seasoning we used on the steaks, like Cattleman's Grill California tri-tip. And we're not gonna go too hot here. Medium, low, we just wanna sweat these out. We don't need a lot of color on them. So these are just softened now, probably about five minutes, if that. What we wanna do now is we're gonna get our white wine in here. You need a quarter cup of a dry white wine. And I want that to re reduce down to almost nothing. Concentrate all that flavor. We're gonna leave just enough of that liquid in the bottom to create this temporary emulsion when we start to mount our butter. So these have been on for about 10 minutes now. Our wine's over there reducing for our butter sauce. We're gonna give these a flip now that we've got some nice uh, browning action going on. Close it back up. We're back to check on them soon. So now we can see that liquid's almost entirely gone. We're gonna start to mount our butter, which is just to say we're gonna slowly add it in over a low temperature. I mean, this is as low as it goes in the temperature settings. And the idea here is just to slowly melt this butter in. We'll start with two pats, but from here on out, just adding one pat at a time and sort of slowly emulsifying the sauce. So this is a slow process, but you're just gonna keep at it. As one pat gets melted, add the next pat of butter in there. The last pat of butter going in now. Look how creamy this is. This is what we get when we mount this in slowly, and keep whisking, keep stirring. The butter slowly melts. You create this emulsion that has such a creamy mouthfeel, which is really important because not only are we gonna be poaching in this sauce, we're actually gonna be finishing with this sauce. So now that we've got all that butter melted in there, it's time to get our lobster tails in. So we're just gonna set those right in the sauce and we're leaving this temperature low and we're just gonna baste these as they cook. Now poaching actually means something very specific. It's a temperature range between 160 and 180 degrees. So that's what we're talking about when we're poaching something. We're cooking it over a very low temperature. The protein comes up slowly and takes on whatever that liquid it's being poached in. Of course, if that's just water, then you don't notice it so much like with a poached egg. But when that liquid is a buttery sauce like this one, you're adding all that flavor as it slowly cooks. So just about 110 degrees on our steaks now. I'm gonna flip these once again. We're getting some really great color on the tops here, or on the surface, I should say. We wanna bring the internal temperature up to about 130 degrees. I'm gonna leave the door open at this point. We may get one more flip in, we may not. So we wanna bring the internal temperature of these lobster tails up to about 130, 135. Kinda of keep moving this because as it cooks, you start to see a little bit of like the butter separation, so we wanna keep that moving. And then if I feel like we're getting a little too warm, just shut the heat off for a minute. Let it continue to cook with the residual heat. But we're just gonna keep these moving Keep basting them, keep them covered in that butter. All right, we've got our lobster tails up in that 135 range. We're just shutting the heat off now. And we're gonna let them stay warm in the sauce while we go get the steaks. 
We are pulling up real close to 130 on these, so I'm gonna go ahead and take them off the grill. Well, let's get them plated up here. I'm fully aware that this steak is probably enough for two all on its own, but I told you we were going big today. For the sake of presentation, I'm just gonna split this. Place it right on top. Now our wine and butter sauce right over the top. Finish it off with a little greenery on top. Fresh parsley. Let's slice in here and check out this dry aged beef. The texture is just totally different when it's dry aged. And of course we didn't have a lot of pink to start with but the temperature's just right in the middle. Oh my goodness. Wow. Just so much flavor in there. The texture is totally different than any wet aged or even just fresh steak, but not in a bad way at all. The color's different than what you're used to with a regular steak, but still a really pretty subtle pink there in the middle. The texture's quite a bit different as well. A flavor though, that's where it's at. I mean, it takes it beyond nutty, nuttiness to almost like a blue cheese funkiness. Not that far though, but that with that butter sauce, that's the magic combination. Man, if you can finish that steak, I'm proud of you. There's a ton of flavor packed into that thing. And now for our lobster tail. Oh my goodness. That texture is fantastic. That's not something you get even from a hot and fast grill. That slow cook, I mean, it's just, look, it almost wants to fall apart. Not tough. Oh, it's way far away from chewy. And it just soaks up all of those flavors from the sauce your garlic, your shallot, the white wine, and of course that butter. Man. I don't know who you're trying to impress, but I think as long as they're not a vegetarian, this is the dish to do it with. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.